Pay attention, take notes. Okay. So, uh, this practicum looks lengthy, but really it's not. Only five different things in there. It's not really that much. And, uh, anyways, this, this is all about aerosol therapy. So, let's go first on the side that says small volume nebulizer at the top. Okay, you got that one, small volume nebulizer at the top. All right, now, when we're giving, you know, aerosolized medicines, there's a sheet up front there. All right. All right. So, uh, delivering aerosolized medications, you know, they're medications. They require a physician's order. And uh, you're going to get the order. You're going to be in your respiratory department. You're going to get an order. It's going to come through some, you know, some media. It's going to come down to your department. And they're going to call you and say that this patient uh, has just been ordered this therapy. Okay, so you're going to have to go to the floor. And you're going to have to flip open the chart. And you're going to have to look. You're going to have to verify the order. Because you're giving a medicine. So you're going to have to verify how that, what is that medicine is and how it's supposed to be delivered. So like many of your other practicums, you're going to have to look at the chart and verify the physician's orders. Don't touch that. Just kidding. You. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. They don't pay me a lot, so I have to have fun at work. <laughs> yes. Anyway, you've got to gather the necessary equipment. Well, in the, the equipment that's involved in delivering a small volume nebulizer is fairly simple. You know, it's going to be a small volume nebulizer, which is prepackaged. And then, of course, you're going to have to make sure that you have uh, some flow meter, either air or oxygen or flow meter. Okay. All right. Uh, anyways, again, you have to introduce yourself. You always have to introduce yourself to the patient. You always have to let them know who you are. They can't be. It's a little bit nerve-wracking when you don't know who comes in your room and what they're there for. So you have to go in, you have to introduce yourself, you gotta explain the nature of your visit, and you know, the procedure in terms that they can understand. You know, simple, the more simple, and the simpler you keep your explanation, the better it is for them. They don't need to know, we're gonna aerosolize some bronchodilators, and it's gonna relieve your bronchospasm, you know, it's going to increase your peak flow. I mean, it's, we don't need to talk that kind of jargon. You say your doctor ordered some medicine uh, that you're going to breathe in. It's going to help you breathe a little better. Just something very simple. The more complex, the more confused the patients have, the more questions they have. So you have to explain things in simple terms. Of course, you're going to go through that whole thing of uh, washing your hands, putting your gloves on, identifying your patients, that whole thing. For this practicum now, all right, you're gonna see there, there's times where it just says verbalize only, so you don't have to do it, but you have to verbalize it to get the points. All right, physician, uh, physician, the, it's supposed to be physician, the patient sitting upright and assess. Again, you're gonna verbalize your assessment. We're not asking you to do it, but you're gonna assess the vital signs and the breath sounds. Now, the reason that you want your patients to sit up the best that they can it's because you want the, the weight of the lungs to pull down so that the lungs open up. If a patient is, is lying down all like this, you ask them, you know, and they're trying to breathe, or, they don't breathe very well. You want them to sit up, let the weight of their lungs pull down and open up their lungs so the medicine goes deeper into their lungs. Does that make sense? All right, so you have to sit them up. Don't let them slouch down, slide in the bed. Do the best you can. Uh, not everybody has the ability to sit up really tall, but just maximize, optimize whatever uh, they're able to do. Okay, assemble the equipment. Okay, you have a small volume nebulizer with a mouthpiece and reservoir tube. Uh, excuse me one second, let me just get a, assemble this thing here, small volume nebulizer. Okay, like I said, it comes prepackaged. Open it up here. Okay. What is this? Small volume nebulizer. Some people are going to call this a side arm nebulizer. Yeah. 
All right, well, that was an old term for an older design, but the term is still around. It means the same thing, small volume, small arm nebulizer, side arm nebulizer, it's the same thing. But the, the real name in the, is small volume nebulizer. And then on top, okay, the medicine goes in, inside here. Okay, the medicine goes inside this medicine cup. Okay? Some people don't take the cup off, they just pour it right into the top. Okay. And then this is a Briggs T adapter. It's right there. And then uh, there's a length of corrugated tubing. And what is this called? A reservoir. reservoir, right? Because it's going to have a small holding chamber here for the medicine. And then uh, there's a mouthpiece. And again, we don't want to handle the mouthpiece with our hands if the patient's going to put it in their mouth, so you want to keep it protected. Like this. All right. And then the last piece to assemble this is the oxygen tubing, which is essentially the drive line for this. You insert that there, and then. So we're gonna have we're gonna have, excuse me, we're gonna have gloves on when we're doing all this, right? For the practical, no. No, but I mean in what? real life, yes. Yeah, in real life, when it says wash your hands, don your gloves, right. they go on right there. All right. Anyways. You're gonna you're gonna connect this either to air or oxygen. Now some hospitals they don't have air outlets. Some hospitals they only have oxygen outlets. They don't have air, so you don't have a choice what to use. Let me just tell you something. If uh, if your patient is on a nasal cannula for oxygen, okay, you don't need to take that off. If if you have both flow meters. And the oxygen cannula, of course, is hooked up there. Well, you know what? You don't have to take them off the oxygen. You can simply just put it on the air and drive this medicine with air. Does that make sense to you? Because they're already getting oxygen. Okay with that? Uh, cannula, there's an airflow meter, drive it with air. What if they only have the oxygen one? Yeah, actually, you don't have a choice. <laughs> you don't have a choice. You have to disconnect the cannula, and then you have to. Now your question has to be obviously, well what if it's a COPD patient, CO2 retainer, no longer uses their carbic drive, uses their hypoxic drive, hypoxic drive backup system. Well, your, your concern is that they'll get too much oxygen, they'll start to hypothermia. These treatments are short in duration. Okay, they're six minutes on average. It's not gonna have a detrimental effect on them. You okay with that? All right, so yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's air or oxygen. Like, if they weren't on anything, you could put it either way. Yeah. And for most people, it's not going to matter at all. It's not going to matter at all. The only ones that would be of concern to you, per se, uh, would be the ones with the you know, CO2 retention. Okay. Okay. So, but, and again, it's not going to hurt them to give them you know, a six-minute treatment with oxygen. It's not going to hurt them. But just remember this. If you go in this sequence, if you take this... COPD patient, chronic obstructive pulmonary patient, who remember naturally they're high in CO2 all the time and they're always low on oxygen, right? And they're on a small amount of oxygen, one or two liters, and you say, okay, good morning, Mr. So and so, it's time for your treatment. And then you take the treatment, you take the cannula off of them, and then you hook this up to oxygen, and then you give them your treatment and then you turn it off and you're leaving, if you forget to put off that oxygen back on that patient, it's going to be a real problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember an incident last year, mask on. They're going to have, let's, you know, whatever. They're going to have, uh, let's just say, an air entrainment mask, 40%. They're going to have that. That means they need quite a bit of oxygen. 40% is a significant amount of oxygen. Well, you're going to be taking that off of them, aren't you? You're going to be taking that off of them. Well, you know what? This delivers about 40% oxygen. When you hook this thing back up, it, it delivers about 40% oxygen. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to give it with oxygen. You wouldn't think of giving it with air for a patient who's already getting oxygen. Does that make sense to you? Do you have any questions on what I've said so far? All right. Sometimes it's going, they're gonna be on high concentration. They may be on a non-rebreather mask. 
So you're dealing with 60, 80% oxygen. That's a lot of oxygen. You take that off of a patient who's really needs that, they're going to be in trouble in short order. Does that make sense? They're going to be in trouble in short order. In short order. So in that case, you, what you hope to find is something like you have here. This head wall here has two oxygen flow meters. So in a case like that, what I would do is I'd hook up one flow meter to a nasal cannula, and I'd have that thing up. If it was on a non-rebreather mask to begin with, I'd have that thing up to six meters. And then on top of that, I would be giving him this. Does that make sense? So I'm giving him about 40% with this, and I'm giving him about 44% here. They're gonna get a nice concentration of oxygen. They're not gonna be saturated. Does that make sense to you? You have to use your sense. If they're on high concentrations of oxygen, to somewhat replicate that. You're not going to replicate it exactly, but you have to somewhat replicate that. If they're on small doses of oxygen, it probably won't matter much. Yeah. So because of the short time, but all right, who cares? I got an airflow meter. Who cares, right? You have an airflow meter. You don't have to take that. Thing. All right. If the patient has an oxygen mask on, well, then you're going to have to drive this thing with oxygen. Does that make sense? All right. Now. Uh, all right, so we'll hook this thing up. I'm just going to hook it up to air here. As I'm right, going to put my medicine in. Okay, let's just walk through these steps so I don't forget anything. It's hard for me to talk. All right. Uh, so we're putting it together. First, we're going to put it together with a mouthpiece. Uh, now, during the practicum, all you have to do is assemble this thing. That's all you have to do. You have to assemble it, and you have to show your instructor. All right, good. He knows how to do it. Because, you know, we see all kinds of weird stuff. So you come out like this. And, no. you know, all kinds of stuff. You name it, man. It comes out. It's just weird. So you have to assemble it right and then show your instructor. And they give you the thumbs up. But then you're going to wind up giving it with an aerosol mask. Does that make sense? Okay, you're going to wind up giving it an aerosol mask. So what we're going to do here 